Come on then, I'll race you to the top. Morning. There's a lot to be said for a cup of tea and a read of the paper first thing. <laughs> you all stick in the mud. Oh, looks like we've got visitors. No, they're just leaving. They've been here for the last couple of days. Come on, we better get back. Please look after it, Mr. Greengrass. It has been in my family for a very long time. It's a bit mucky, though, isn't it? I'm sorry, I did not think. Uh, now. Hey, hey, you lads, leave them chickens alone, will you? Hey, how many times do you want telling? Leave them alone! I'm sorry. Stefan, Stefan, into the caravan, huh? Into the caravan. <laughs> uh, he's Constantin. He uh, cannot hear. But, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll give five. Yesterday, you said it was five guineas. Yeah, uh, I've been drinking. <laughs> All right, go on, then. Yeah, five guineas. Thank you. Thank you. You will find tea from the summer of our very good. Really? riding more often. OK, we will. Look, um, I'd better get off. What's the hurry? Blaketon on the warpath. No, I want to get in early. I want to ask him about something. Oh? Is it private? No, no, not really. I was just thinking about what you said, about promotion. I can't just settle for being a humble constable if you're planning on becoming a high-flying head teacher now, can I? See you then. How's that, Mum? It looks marvellous, Susan. I hope that Michael Harvey's not taking advantage of your good nature. He's allowed to be happy for one day, isn't he? Of course. But well, I must get off to school. When I get back, I expect this kitchen to be exactly like I left it last night. Tidy. Yes, Mum. early this morning. Anything serious? No, no, I went riding with Joe. <laughs> you must be keen. Where'd you go? Mm. Just up on the moors. Good book. Lateral thinking. Apparently it's all the rage. Solving problems by looking at them from different angles rather than head on. Sounds a bit heavy to me. Well, that's very interesting. I think it's called heuristic. Right. Well, I'd best be off. See you later. <laughs> bye bye. I don't know why you persist in doing this. It's a pointless exercise. Don't say that, Michael. Well, it is. <sighs> My birthday treat. Well, the only pleasure I have left. Happy birthday. Thank you. Susie and Ronnie are planning a surprise party. They think I don't know about it. That whiskey doesn't help, not with the medication you're on. Look, it's the last birthday I'm going to have, so I'm going to make damn sure I enjoy it. Anyway, I have a surprise to announce, so I'll need all the Dutch courage I can get. Sounds intriguing. You going to let me in on it? Not yet. <laughs> well, I hope it all goes well for you. What do you think about my son, Maggie? I'm sorry? Ronnie, do you like him? Well, uh, yes. You could do a lot worse than marry him. <laughs> He'll be well off. 
he needs a woman like you to keep him right. Shouldn't love come into it somewhere? I suppose so. I just worry about him, Maggie. What he'll do when I'm gone. Ronnie, they're for the party. Delicious. You've got crumbs all over your face. Go on, then. Why won't you come away with me? Because your father needs me. I need you. Anyway, you'll be going to college soon, so we'll have to find somebody else then. I know you want to be with me. I told you, no, I can't. What would I tell Mum? Anything you like. I just want to be with you, and I know you feel the same. Something smells good. Apple pie. How's Dad? As well as can be expected. The doctor told me that his heart isn't getting any stronger. How long's he got? I can't really answer that, Ronnie. <laughs> Shut up, will you? Congratulating! <laughs> come on, come on, come on. <laughs> what are you two doing back here? I thought you left with your dad. He went without us. Well, you better go and find him then, haven't you? Please, can you help us? Help me? I'm, I'm too busy. I can't go traipsing over the moors. Look. Hang on, I'll get my coat. What makes you think you're sergeant material, Rowan? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Sarge. I thought you'd give me some advice. There's more to being a sergeant than sitting an exam. It's about attitude, experience. Yes, Sarge. Dedication. Discipline. It's not just as easy as all that, you know. What are you aiming for eventually? Well, I'm not sure yet. Taking one step at a time, are we? Yes, Sarge. Well, I think you should do it. Though I can't give you any days off. You'll have to study in your own time. You've been reading up on lateral thinking, have you, Sarge? Not anymore. I can't understand it, nor tale of it. Heuristic, isn't it? It's a way of looking at problems from different angles. Oh, yes. Well, I never thought there was anything wrong with a normal way. Now, you realise I can't release you for any promotion classes if you're needed here. Understood, Sarge. Thank you. Don't mention it, Rowan. Don't mention it. They're going to cause chaos. They're only kids. Yeah, right, yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll leave you with them. Well, they can't stay here. They'll be all right. Uh, the, Mr Greengrass, I can't possibly have them. Well, I can't have them either, can I? Well, you'll have to take them to the police station. I can't get traipsing all the way over to yeah. Ashford, Lee. I mean, I'm going to get off. I'm going to... Will you get off? Get off! Well, it looks like you found a friend. <sighs> if he keeps this up, he'll have found an enemy. <laughs> Are you asking him? Well, are you going to tell us or not? What? Well, what was going on in there? It's private. I knew I should have put my ear to the door. But if you must know, I was asking him about taking my sergeant's exams. Oh, is that all? Well, you should have said. I'll give you a hand. Alf, you haven't taken your sergeant's exam. No, but I've read enough of the books. Here, any problems, give us a shout. Thanks, Alf. Oh, can I help you, madam? Oh, I hope so. You must. He went out yesterday afternoon and I haven't seen him since. Poor Stuart. Have you any idea where he might have gone, Mrs... Um... Forrest. I've looked everywhere. He never stops out all night, so I know something terrible's happened to him. Well, is there someone at home waiting for him? We live alone. Oh, I see. Well, we'd better get some details. Uh, Stuart, did you say? That's right. Stuart Forrest. Granger. Granger? I presume we're not talking about Stuart Granger, the star of Scaramouche and the Man in Grey. Oh, wasn't he good in that? 
Oh, yes. Mrs. Ventress and I enjoyed that one. I've always liked him. <laughs> right, Miss Weston, I'll, I'll leave him with you then, aren't I? You'll have to speak to Mrs. Watkins first. The dad's name's Michael, but it sounds a bit foreign. You can't miss him, though. He's, he's dark with a beard in a caravan. He'll be back as soon as he realises I'm missing. But Mr. Greengrass... Who have we got here? This is... Well, I'm not too sure. Mr. Greengrass just dropped them off. Miss Weston, what is going on? So how long do you think it's going to be? Well, it's a couple of days' work, at least. A couple of days? I can't be without a vehicle. I borrow that one over there. Keys are in it. Thanks, Bernie. Bye. Now, Mike, fancy a cup of tea? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, up, Bernie. What do you make of this? I don't need a chamber pot, thank you, Lord. I'm talking about the samovar. It's what the Russians use for making tea. I prefer my tea the English way. It's not for using, is it? It's a collector's piece. It's for buying and selling. Lad has sold it to me. He reckons it's worth... Well, he said it was over 100 years old. Yeah, look, I'm a bit busy, Claude. Did you want me for something? I wonder if you got out I can use to clean it up a bit. Well, I might have something. I'll put you on a drink when I sell it, and it won't be tea. Come on. Careful how you go. Bold needs replacing. I did tell you. I nearly dropped the flame in some of our... Oh. My heck, Bernie. I never realised you did this sort of thing. What sort of thing? A bit like that film, isn't it? What film? You know, that madman in the hotel with the knife who kept his stuffed mother in the cellar. They're very good, though. I tell you, I'm, I'm very impressed. I never realised you were so talented. Thank you. Here you are. This should do the trick. Oh. Maybe I could manage a weekend. Great. Two days at the most. I knew you'd <laughs> change your mind. Did you know? How could you resist me? Good looking. Soon to be very rich. Don't talk like that. I'm doing this because of the way I feel about you. I'm not interested in your money. Sorry. I'm only teasing. So where are they now? In Mrs Watkins' office. Well, I better take a look at them, I suppose. How did it go with Sergeant Blayton? Well, he says he can't give me any time off the study. And he'll only release me for emotion classes if we're not busy. Sounds like he's frightened of the competition. Billy, will you stop that? Yes. When you've got a minute, Constable, there are two boys here I'd like you to meet. Certainly, Mrs. Watkins. Better, Mrs. Forrest. Oh, thank goodness it's you, Mr. Greengrass. Oh, what's up? It's Stuart. He's on the bed in the spare room. Dead. Stuart, Stuart, too. Stuart Granger. Are you on some sort of tablet? <laughs> Come on. They can stay until the end of school, Mr. Owen. But after that, much as I'd like to help. Yeah, well, don't worry, I'll sort something out. Well, they can come home with me after school. But their father's bound to come back for them sooner or later, isn't he? There he is! Poor Stuart! Oh, that's your cat. What, what, what do you want me to do, Ida? Could you bury him for me? Oh, don't cry, love. You, you, you can soon find another cat. There's Another one like him. I don't know what I'll do without him. Hey, hey, I've just had an idea. I've got a friend. If you, if you, if you let me have him for a few days, I'll bring him back. He'll be as good as new. It's a bit late for that rigor mortis is setting. Yes, I know, but you, you just leave it to me. Of course, he, he won't do it for nothing. I mean, it'll have to be a little charge. How much? Oh, it won't come to a lot. Five pounds. Go on, Dad, you can do it. Make a wish first. <laughs> I don't see the point, do you? I'm sorry, Susan. Of course I should make a wish. <sighs> I 
Done. What did you wish for? That would be telling, son. Get another bottle of wine, Ronnie. I said, in the village, I should come here. Mr. Greengrass is not dead. I don't know what to do. Come here, come here. What's the problem? My children, they were missing. They were in the caravan. When I stop and look, they are gone. You're Mikhail? Yeah, yeah. Well, Stefan and Constantine are safe. Oh, thank God. They're with the school teacher. Thank you. I'll show you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am very grateful. I give you gift. No, that, that won't be necessary. I thought I had lost my boys. No, they're, they're fine. They're in very good hands. Susie. Just sit down a moment, please. I'll just get the cake. Little, please forget about the cake. This is important. You've been... Very good to me over the last few months. I've not been easy to work for or live with. But I'm glad you've been here for me. It's been my pleasure. No. The pleasure's been all mine. I look forward to seeing you in the morning. And I'm always sad when you leave at night. I'd like you to have this. Michael, I... Susie, I haven't long to go, but if you would agree to it, I'd like you to be my wife. I thought another red would be fine. What's going on? I've asked Susan to be my wife. You've what? Is this some kind of sick joke? No joke. What do you say, Susan? I... This is ridiculous, Dad. You're old enough to be her grandfather. You really have lost your mind. I don't think so. Yes, you have. Don't say that, Ronnie. What did you do? Lead him on? No. I don't know what I'd do without you, Susie. You scored a hit there. Stop it! Stop it! Let's have your answer. <laughs> let her go. I can't let her go like She's that. She's walked out. She's not interested. You don't know that. I do. Because you're a drunken fool and she's in love with me. She's a liar. Now let go. Let go! Some help. There's been a terrible accident. Where are you, Maggie? All right. Yeah, I'll be there straight away. Well, is Maggie all right? I'm not sure. There's been an accident on the Ashfordley Road. <laughs> Maggie, what happened? It was awful, Nick. She was just there in the road. Who's that? Susan Watkins. Who's that car? Um, mine. Benny lent it to me. The Land Rover's in for repairs. Well, just tell me exactly what happened. Some idiot forced me off the road back there. Blinded me with his lights and then suddenly there was Susan lying in the road. What are you doing? Well, as soon as any paint samples for forensics. I don't think I did it, do you? I didn't knock her down, Nick. You have to believe me, it's the truth.
What are you doing? What do you think? You look terrible. I'm fine. I feel dreadful. Give me a hand. It's not fair to leave this mess for Susie to clear up. Hand me those plates. I don't think Susan will be coming in today. Why not? After what happened last night. Don't you remember anything? I remember I proposed to her. <laughs> and the rest? What about the rest? I tell you, Mr. Greengrass, my heart stopped beating when I found the boys had gone. I'm not surprised. I cannot thank you enough for what you did. Oh, it's all right if I can help somebody. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. You've cleaned it up. Well, it looks nice now, doesn't it? I cannot do this, Mr. Greengrass. I must give you back your money. Uh, yeah, that's all right, son. But it is not fair. It's, it's all right as far as I'm concerned. Son. But, Mr. Greengrass... Hey, hey, it's stopping with me. As you wish. May you find peace and prosperity, Mr. Greengrass. Oh, well, I don't know about the peace, but I wouldn't mind a bit of prosperity. What's the latest on Susan Watkins, Ventris? Uh, no sign of her coming out of the coma, sir. Mm. And what about the car Nurse Bolton was driving? Have you heard from forensics, Ron? Uh, not yet, no. Well, until it's clear, she's still a suspect. Yeah, but Sarge... Never mind, but Sarge. She couldn't identify the car that she claimed forced her off the road, or the driver, and her vehicle is damaged. I checked the road where she claims she went off, and it fits with her story. But she was unfamiliar with the car that she was driving. She could easily have spun out of control and knocked Susan Watkins over that way. And what about this mysterious car that she said she saw? Have you checked all the garages, Bellamy? Any recent panel-beating jobs? Well, found nothing yet, Sarge. Well, ask again. I want this sorted out. Fast. Off you go, Alan. You're all right. Hey, and stop biting your nails. Hello, Billy. How are you? All right. All right, I'm just going to check through your hair. Where's Mrs Watkins? Um, she's not in today. You were not to dot down in your car. No, I didn't, Billy. Who told you I did? I can't remember. Well, I didn't do it. That's what I said. I told you that you're too nice to do that. Have I got this? No. Go on, Billy. Back to class. Is that what people are saying about me? It's only gossip, Maggie. Don't let it get you down. You know what children are like. This is awful, Joe. When I saw Susan, I stopped and called an ambulance. Now everyone thinks I did it. I'm sure they don't. And they'll soon know the truth. You mustn't worry. So unfair. Susan had everything to look forward to. And there's some idiot out there who just drove into her and put an end to all her dreams. You mustn't give up hope. She was going to go to teach at training college, you know. She wanted to be a teacher ever since she was little. I'm so proud of you. Now, the accident occurred about half past seven, Mrs. Watkins. Is that the time Susan always set off home? No, she was usually home earlier. It was Mr. Harvey's birthday. They were having a party for him. Did she get on well with the Harveys? As far as I know, yes. Mr. Harvey depends on her. He has blackouts. She's more of a nurse than a housekeeper these days. Or she was. Did she say she was going to meet anyone? Like who? Girlfriend, boyfriend? She didn't have a boyfriend. No, she didn't say anything. It was a typical morning. I set off for school and she cycled to the Harveys. Hey, Aunt Bernie. I brought you cleaning stuff back. Hey, you need sunglasses to look at that samovar now. That gypsy tried to buy it back. <laughs> I've, uh, I've, I've got a job for you. Oh, yes. That's a stuffing job. It's in here. It belongs to that Ida Forest. I can't do anything with that. 
Of course you can. Bag of sawdust, bit of imagination, you have it done in no time. I can't. Oh, come on, look, I promised her. Look, I'll tell you what, she's uh, she's paid me five quid. I'll I'll split it with you. Well, actually... And uh, when you do it, just try and tart him up a bit, cos she called him Stuart Granger. At the moment, he looks a bit more like Bella Lugosi. <laughs> I can't believe it. They're not Susie. Well, she'll be all right. Oh, well, they don't know. She's still in a coma. But she might come round. Could happen, couldn't it? She might not die. That's yeah, possible. If she does, will she be affected? You know, her head. Well, that's too early to say. How could anyone just leave her in the road like that? Don't upset yourself, Dad. That's what we're trying to find out, sir. It must have happened shortly after she left here. It's all my fault. We thought she didn't come here today because of last night. Why? What happened last night? I proposed to her, and she ran off. My father went after her, but he only got to the end of the drive when he blacked out. I'd had quite a lot of whiskey. My medication sometimes rebels against it. He has quite powerful pills. They just knock him out. I keep warning him. When she left, did she take her bicycle? I don't know. Do you know, Ronnie? I suppose she did, but I didn't see her go. She'd already gone by the time I got to Dad. Do you mind if I take a look round outside? Check that it's still here. Visiting's two, two or three if you want to see Susan. We wouldn't want to get in the way of her family. Maybe later. Right. Well, I'll see myself out. I wish I could remember. Why can't I remember? A tiny piece of colored glass My love was born And reds and golds and yellows Where the colors in the dawn Night brought on its purple cloak of velvet to the sky And the gulls were wheeling, spinning on Jersey Thursday Mrs. Watkins, Janet, so sorry about... Janet, I've just come from seeing Susan. She's lying there in a coma, Mrs. Bolton. Did you really see another car? Yes. Then why haven't they found it? S Susan was already in the road when I found her. I don't know how you can live with yourself. Janet. You're right, Dad. I was. Having a nightmare, that's all. I can't get rid of the thought of Susan lying in that road. Try to sleep, Dad. Let's get some rest. In the tiny piece of coloured glass My love was born And reds and golds and yellows Were the colours in the dawn Night brought on its purple cloak of velvet to the sky And the gulls were wheeling, spinning on Jersey Thursday I've made some toast. I'm not hungry. You have to eat. I can't. I thought I'd visit Susan this morning. I don't think that's a good idea. But a familiar voice, it might be enough to bring her round. Will you come with me? I can't face seeing her like that. Can't you leave her alone for five minutes? How do you know Susan Watkins left her out on her bike? Well, I can't know for sure, Sars, but she was in a hurry. It hardly makes sense for her to walk. 
and there was no sign of the bike at the harvest. Nor the scene of the accident, which means whoever knocked her over took it with them. Which leaves Maggie Bolton in the clear. Not necessarily. She could have dumped it anywhere well, along that road. Like but it's so. possible. So if I were you, I'd search that road for two miles in both directions. I already have. So where is it? What do you call it, Claude? It's a samovar. Russians use them for making tea. And what are you going to do, Sally? Ah, oh, when I've had it properly valued. Man, it looks nice on the bar, doesn't it? I might sell it to George. Don't do that. I'll have to polish it. We'll stick to the kettle. You know your trouble, don't you? You've got no sense of adventure. I wouldn't say that. I live with Uncle George. <laughs> Give me another scotch. <laughs> have you heard anything about the car Maggie was driving? No, not yet. Come on, eat it up. She will be able to clear a name, won't she? Yeah, I'm sure she will. Do you know much about the Harveys? Oh, I don't move in the same circles. Rita says they've got more money than they know what to do with. Do you want some milk? Why, are they involved? Well, no, not on the face of it. This is something not quite right. But you can't find any evidence? Well, no, I've checked both their cars. not a scratch on either of them. Maybe you're looking at it the wrong way. How do you mean? Well, you're looking at their cars and wondering why they aren't marked. Perhaps you should be wondering where the marks are. But both cars are clean. But they could be on another car. There's nothing to stop them having more than two. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, thanks, Harley. You're a genius. No. It's just lateral thinking. Who do you think you are, Bernie? Bobby Charlton? Who? Has uh, Susan Watkins' bike been found yet? Not yet, Sarge. Sarge, I've been at the tax office at North Allerton. Michael Harvey has three cars registered in his name. A Humber Scepter, an MGA and a Triumph 2000. So? So when I checked their garage, there was no sign of the Triumph. Well, get over there. Find out what they've done with it. Yes, madam. May I help you? Um, I'd like to speak to Constable Rowan, please. Hello, Mrs Watkins. Hello. How's Susan? No change, I'm afraid. When you asked me the other day about Susan and boyfriends, I told you she didn't have any. It looks like I was wrong about that. They're all like that, begging her to go away with him. Why would she keep them if they had no meaning for her? Sarge? Yeah? Mrs Watkins, I've got some letters here for yeah. to Susan. They're all signed, Love, Ronnie. Ronnie Harvey. Hello, Maggie. Hello. We've had the test back from forensics. We're in the clear. My oh, goodness. Well, I never suspected you anyway. You acted like you did. Well, I had to take those tests on the car, Maggie. It's procedure. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm so relieved. Well, I'll make sure the gossips get to hear about it. Oh, so will I. See you then. Bye. Afternoon, Mr. Harvey. Constable? Just a few questions I need to ask. I don't want my father worried. Well, that's all right. It's you I want to speak to. I'd rather we did it at the station. Hi, Bernie! What a job I made of this, eh? Hey, up. Beautiful, isn't it? I've taken it to love in value. Thank you. Best of luck. I'll, uh... How's Stuart Granger coming on? I haven't had a chance to look at him yet. Right, but she keeps asking about him. I've, I've actually told her that you've done it. Look, you can't put a deadline on the work of art. She can have it when it's finished. All right. Do your best. I'm looking for Go down. Bless, I can't do this anymore. Yes. Come out of there. At once. 
Been to see Susan in hospital yet? No. Well, that's not very impressive for someone who loved her as much as you claim to. I don't know what you mean. You don't deny it, do you? Of course I do. So these weren't written by you then? I wrote them, yes. A long time ago. Not a crime, is it? No. No, why don't you say anything? I was just fooling around. She knew that. She didn't take it seriously. Well, you obviously felt something for her. I liked her. I mean, I like her, yes. So it must have come as a bit of a shock when your father proposed to her. Yes. I don't understand. Am I under arrest? No, no, you're free to leave any time, Mr Harvey. I just thought you might like to help us with our inquiries. Look, Susan and I were seeing each other, but we didn't want to upset my father. He's very fond of her. You know how ill he is. So it wasn't that much of a shock when he proposed to her? You knew how he felt about her? Yes. No, I don't know. You're confusing me. I'd like to go now. Where's the car, Ronnie? What car? The Triumph 2000. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? I have a confession to make. I followed her in the car after she left the house. It was foggy, and I couldn't see very well. I felt a bump. You collided with her. Poor Susan. What have I done? And afterwards, you went back home and put the car in the barn? Yes. On your own? Yes. No one helped you? No. Why didn't you call for an ambulance? I must have blacked out. You're not sure? I told you I blacked out. Why so many questions? I did it. And I'm not denying it. Why don't you just accept that? What did you do with the bicycle? Bicycle? I can't remember. I've just told you my father sold it. When? I don't know. He just told me that he did. I don't remember the exact date. Well, can your father confirm this? Why don't you ask him? I will. Ron, a word. Yeah, just a minute, Sarge. No! Excuse us. He was just about to tell me something, Sarge. It was him, I'm sure it was. There's been a development. The father's here. He's confessed. Hey? He said he was drunk when he went after the girl in his car, knocked her over, panicked, and then drove home. So it seems it was an accident. Ronnie told me his father backed out at the end of their drive. Well, maybe he's covering up for his father. Or maybe it's the other way around. Michael Harvey doesn't know his son's here. And what about the missing triumph? He told me where it is. So Michael Harvey's telling the truth. Well, he couldn't remember anything when I spoke to him. Well, not very much. Must have come back to him. Sarge? What? Well, is this a girl's bike? Well, it looks like it. He, he must have picked the bike up and left the girl on the road. Why would he have done that? Well, he's too slosh most of the time to think straight. Or well, maybe Ronnie helped him. You'll never get him to admit that. 
And do you want me to work on running? I reckon. We found the Triumph, Ronnie. Where? Oh, come on. Under a tarpaulin in one of your barns. Anyone could have put it there. And you expect me to believe that? You said your father sold it. That's what he told me. So tell me again what your father did after Susan left. He didn't do anything. He couldn't. I found him slumped over the wheel at the bottom of the drive. He didn't even make it out onto the main road. So which car was he driving? I can't remember. Or was it the Humber, the MGA, the Triumph, think? The Triumph wasn't there. The Humber, I think. You think? No, I'm sure. And you sure he didn't drive it out onto the road? Positive. Well, I've got some news for you, Ronnie. Your father's here and he's confessed. He says he was driving the Triumph. So who's lying? I wish to make a complaint. You've come to the right place. Oh, did Stuart Granger ever turn up? He turned up dead. Oh, dear. I'm sorry about that. It's his death I've come to complain about. Ah. Mr Greengrass said he could preserve him, and I took him at his word. Well, not the sort of thing you want to do with Mr Greengrass. Did you say preserve? I believe that's what he said. He took Stuart away and I gave him five pounds. Mr Greengrass told me he's ready and he hasn't brought him back. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll drop round to Mr Greengrass tomorrow and try to get the matter cleared up. Thank you. I could never get another cat. Well, if you thought of keeping a tortoise, they're much less trouble. I got it from records. It's been in his family for generations. Oh, yes. Ah, from what he said, like, it's, it's hundreds and hundreds of years old. Is it now? Ah. Yeah, sort of pear like this uh, ten years ago. <laughs> Small world, isn't it? Yeah, my uh, grandson brought them back from abroad uh, in his national service days. Uh, uh, I didn't know our lads were in Russia. <laughs> they weren't. Uh, well, what, what, what do you think, then? It's worth, I have to guess, two pounds. And them being generous. Two quid, don't talk daft. I paid a fiver for it. You've been had. I, I think I'll go and get a second opinion. Oh, that's up to you. Hey, you, you know you were saying your lad brought one back when he were in the army. Where were he serving? Hong Kong. <laughs> Can I leave now? When we've finished. Your father says he knocked Susan down, but where do you fit in? Did he tell you when he got home? No. Did you help him hide his car? No, I didn't. You're lying, Ronnie. You couldn't have found him in his car at the end of the drive because he's just confessed. So what did you do? Get there too late after he'd knocked her down, is that it? Then you drove him home and put him to bed. I... Found him at the bottom of the drive on his way back. I knew the car had been in an accident because there was some blood, but I didn't know who had been knocked down. I, I couldn't get any sense out of Dad. So you did put him to bed and hide the car? Yes, I knew something had happened. Dad can't be put in prison, can he? Because he's so ill. Well, that'll be up to the courts. Ronnie, what are you doing here? Whatever he said, he was only doing it for me. Dad, what have you done? I've told him everything. You were covering up for me. It's my fault, son. Just one thing, Ronnie. 
You hit the car? Yes, I've told you. So you must have hidden the bike with it. It was under the tarpaulin with the car on it. You hid it. Yes. So you must have known Susan was involved in the accident? I suppose so. And you did nothing? Why didn't you call for help? I didn't think there was any point. Why not? What are you saying, Ronnie? I thought she was dead. I thought she wasn't breathing. So you were there? Just tell us what happened. I was angry with her. I just wanted to talk to her. Ask her if she was really going to marry you. The car skidded. There was a terrible bang. And she just bounced off the road. She didn't get up. It wasn't you, Dad. It's true what I said. I found you at the bottom of the drive. I don't believe you. It's true. I took you inside. And then I went after her in your car. It was me. I did it. Why did you leave her like that? I didn't know what to do. I was going to tell you. When? When were you going to tell me? I'm so sorry. It's Stuart. Oh, you brought him at last. Come in. Yeah, I didn't think I'd let you down, did you? <laughs> Bring him through. I think he'll be glad to be home. Uh. <laughs> oh, it doesn't even look like Stuart Granger. Well, he, he, he didn't look all that good in Scaramouche. <laughs> I'll kill him. I'm actually looking forward to Mrs Watkins coming back to school. How is she? Much better now. She's just so relieved Susan's out of the coma. Hey, hey, Bernie, I want a word with you. Did you get a fortune for your samovar clothes? Samovar? He's got an antique Russian tea in, gypsy family heirloom. Did he give you one too? Give? No, he certainly did not. What did he fetch? No, but misery, just like him. What do you think you were doing when you stuffed that cat? That Mrs Forrest nearly had a flaming heart attack. I've had to give her her money back. Call yourself a taxidermist. Well, father, he was a taxidermist. I just lent a hand. What'd you do, sweep up the sawdust? Why didn't you tell me that? Well, you didn't really give me the chance. Well, I'm giving you the chance now. Get me a large scotch. So you've been getting presents from the gypsies, have you? <laughs> Michal gave me some of us for looking after the kids. A bit free with his family heirlooms, isn't he? Oh, I think Greengrass paid quite a lot for his. <laughs> Where to now? No schoolwork to mark. All done. Great. It makes a change having you to myself. I've already seen you this week. I know. I've been thinking, Nick, about going away one weekend. Just you and me. What do you think? That sounds like a very good idea to me. Let's make it soon, eh? 